uh, thank you, Wally. Thank you uh, very much to the sponsors for having me. Thank you to CSC for uh, having me participate today. This is a, an honor. Uh, we've been working with CSC for a while and I'm very excited to be a part of this. Uh, I'd like to start off today sharing a little bit of an embarrassing story with you all. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of contemplate not sharing it. But uh, anyways, it, it'll kind of drive to my point of what I want to talk about to today. Uh, so uh, last weekend, it was my son's birthday. And of course, we have to do birthdays virtually. And we were doing a, a virtual cooking class with him and his friends. Had to drop off a bunch of, you know, uh, supplies to all his friends in the neighborhood. And uh, last minute, we realized we're still missing a key ingredient, milk. So my wife sends me to the grocery store first thing in the morning. I, I rush out over there. Um, and, you know, of course, it's not just one thing. I made a list of like about another half dozen things that I needed to pick up. So I head over to the grocery store, wait in line, pop into the grocery store, I grab everything. But as I'm going into the grocery store, I realize I forgot my list. I don't have it documented. I don't know what it was that I was supposed to get. And I've got a little bit of a memory like a sieve. So I'm like, oh, it's not that many. I can figure it out. I try calling home. Wife's not answering because she's in the shower. I try to uh, call the house line. Kids never answer the phone, of course. Like they just, they've never had picked it up. So I'm like, okay, so I'm on my own here. Let's see, let's, let's, hopefully this all works out. So I went through the store. I got all the ingredients, got my bags. I get home to my driveway. And I realized as I'm turning in, I forgot the milk. Like that the key ingredient, what I needed. So turned around and hopefully I see a bunch of people on here that uh, none of you know my wife, so she doesn't really need to know. But I was able to get back, get the milk and get back in time to save the birthday. But my point to all this is, is when I speak to surveyors, architects, contractors, uh, people who are making floor plans or documenting space for a project that they're going to be working on, uh, there's, there's, you know, always something that's in the back of their mind or two things really that when they come out of that space is that, did they get everything they needed? You know, when I was walking out of that grocery store, I was kind of thinking, did I get everything that I needed? And so not having it on my phone or device or documented somewhere where it's easy to go back and reference put me at a disadvantage. And that is always one thing that I, I constantly hear back is that I go in, I measure space, did I get that window? I just have it lingering in the back of my mind. The second thing that I always hear back is, you know, what did I need that I didn't know I needed? And I know that kind of sounds a little ambiguous or uncertain, but I can explain that a little bit later in more detail. But it's really the fact that, you know, was there a detail or something that you needed to understand about that space that you didn't know at point in time until you're back at the office and you're working on either designs or plans or, or whatever project that you're into. So VR gives you the ability to be in a space without physically being there. And, and that's really... I know it sounds simplistic, but it's that's what's really the beauty of it. And you can explore, you can measure, you can you can understand details about that built space that you know you wouldn't have if you weren't able to reference it time and time again. When you're working in the built world, this gives you the literal ability to save time. It gives you ability to, to share ideas, gain insights, and develop an understanding, and really help make decisions with confidence from a virtual seat, right? You don't have to, uh, you don't have to, you know, question some of the facts and the figures that you do have. So um, what I like to talk about is the benefit, you know, I'm a sales and marketing guy and, and what is benefit does this deliver? And the big one that always comes back to, now I hesitate to share it because it's, it's one of those terms that's not, you know, incredibly exciting, like it's, it's efficiency. It brings efficiency. Now, efficiency is not what you, you know, put on your marquee statement for a brand and marketing. And, you know, efficiency is not what your buddy is going to brag about when you when you uh, he tells you about his brand new car. Um, unless, of course, you're a millennial. Like, uh, there's a few millennials I know in my neighborhood. They do brag about the efficiency of their car. So it, maybe it is starting to change. But it's one of those things that um, it truly does bring efficiency and and even though I'm struggling with the term, uh, this is what it offers. And from a fast and efficient way to capture, measure this visual data to create floor plans, 3D tours, I'm gonna to walk you through how different companies have found these efficiencies to empower their work by saving time and money in their day-to-day -day work, 
empowering decision making, not only for themselves, but to make better decisions, but to gain buy in from other decision makers, to get buy in from their clients, or even walk their clients through decisions. And the third point is really empowering communications, empowering communications and understanding. So this leads to the ability to provide more value and really drive revenue. Now, I know that's all sounds salesy and stuff, but there's a lot of things here that um, I'm always amazed at seeing the different ways that people are using virtual reality technology to capture spaces, but then using it within their work. So as I go through my presentation, um, I'll, I'll touch on a little bit of what I mean by virtual reality. Uh, I'll briefly talk about ourselves and, and what we do so you have a, an understanding of what I'm talking about here uh, and today. And then I'll frame, a, uh, you know, after I frame that definition of virtual reality for you, I'll take you a little bit about the difficulties of democ um, of documenting built spaces and how you overcome those challenges and how this technology helps professionals, uh, you know, in working in built spaces uh, come over that. And I say this term a lot, built spaces and buildings and in houses, wherever you're, you're indoors really and dealing with a building as is what I'm referring to. So in this way, you know, I'll share some cases uh, and that's really the crux of it is getting down to those case studies. I hope to share different ways that benefits, uh, how people are benefiting from this and really uh, some of them may be directly uh, applicable to what you're doing in your work, and some of them may not, but it might give you some ideas of how you could use it in your work. And so uh, I'm excited to be here again today. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to jump. Sorry, just my slides here. Okay, perfect. Uh, I hopefully if there's, you know, someone speak up, if it's not, it should just be a picture of a camera system that's up here. So um, really what our, uh, one of our co-founders and our CEO of the company invented a camera system that uh, captures and measures space. So it grabs a visual data as well as a uh, laser data to get you room dimensions, area calculations, uh, and, and then document that space, tying it all together with the visuals. What uh, we use excuse on our, me, oh, excuse me, Michael. There's nothing showing on the screen. We still see you. Oh my goodness! So I did all that talking, but it's okay. Good. Thank you. I'm glad I asked the question. <laughs> uh, I guess it was all set up, and now it's. Do you see? Do you see my main screen? Yes. Thumbs up. Great. Thanks, guys. All right. So our camera system uses a lidar time of flight laser. Uh, and and that's it's it's accurately measuring out these spaces and tying that with the visual data. Uh, we're using a DSLR camera system, and and uh, and this is just like an image of it. But basically, it allows you to quickly go through a space so you can capture if it's an office environment or a home. It is a fast one of the fastest ways to create a floor plan uh, that that you know with accurate room dimensions and measurements. And what's nice about it is that. You could go through a, a typical 3,000 square foot home in 20 minutes and, and capture and document that whole property. Chris here uh, in the image, he's our, our, our I guess I call our eye guide guru. He was able to capture uh, one of the CSC projects. The first one we worked on was 174,000 square feet in under four hours. Now he quickly captured that. And since then, that was several years ago, we've improved the speed and efficiency of our technology. What that data that you're collecting from the camera system is showing up here on screen is that it's this laser data and it's tied directly to the visual data. So you know exactly what you're looking at. And what that allows is our drafting team to now exactly see what they're drafting, verify if they're drafting in a wall, a pillar, or if it's a bookshelf and that they don't need to draw it in. And this is what's enabling our drafting team to uh, put together these floor plans that, that we can kick back. Uh, and what we get from that, again, are as-built floor plans with a, a high degree of accuracy and a 3D virtual tour, which is delivered in the iframe where you could deliver other content like photos and other detailed information about a property. So uh, that, I mean, I'll, I'll show you a little example of the product. You know, we've been around since 2013. We've done over 400 million square feet of, 
of drafting uh, spaces. Um, we're in over a dozen countries around the world and we're coast to coast in Canada. I mean, we're in the Yukon to Halifax and Alaska to Florida. So we've got hundreds and hundreds of service providers across the country. And you know, the only relevant point to that is that uh, there's different ways that people are using our tech. They either run the tech themselves to create the virtual tours or they use our service providers to capture it for them if it's efficient and if it's in a different area or markets. I'd like to talk about you know, how we got involved with, uh, uh, with the CSC and this has been a wonderful relationship. Um, Susan uh, and our co-founder, Kevin Kligas, our other co-founder, Kevin Kligas, he's, you know, since um, uh, he's, he's uh, not working in the, the organization or the company anymore, he uh, came from a background of uh, working in um, cost estimating and in this world of commercial real estate, where he understood the value of quick and fast floor plan creation uh, and accurate floor plan creation uh, and saw the value of our technology uh, early on. And, you know, in building this relationship with CSC allowed him to really nurture that, that opportunity. Because as a company, we are primarily focused on the residential real estate side of, uh, of the world. So, you know, people are using this to sell and market homes, to provide consumers with the key information they want to see when they shop. And it's been used more as a marketing tool than really as a, the functional tool that it really um, uh, it does provide that I'm going to run you through today. Uh, Kevin, since then, has saw and understood that that op opportunity and has started up a company called Mapley in the Kitchener Waterloo area where he is delivering on uh, providing these services to his uh, to his clients. So he, he built this relationship and it was really to see, you know, with CSC where we could supplement site visits and provide as built floor plans for the participants in the competition. Um, you know, we also, and I think I'll click on here in a second, I got an example of this, the website. And if you have the opportunity, you can go check out the website with the different competitions that we have. But working with CSC is really, was the entrance into the world of design and architecture for us. This relationship has connected us with some of our customers that I'm gonna speak about today. And some of the examples of how they're using this technology, this virtual reality technology and their work and how it's brought that efficiency. Now, if I, you know, if anybody has a better term than efficiency, throw it in there in the chat and, and, and I'll take those suggestions from you. It's also reaffirmed and highlighted the benefits of the technology outside of purely marketing and sales from the residential standpoint. And this is where it's been uh, a, a great tool. So, um, I think in, just because we've lost a few minutes, I'm going to jump over a couple of things. But um, the, you know, the first building that we did with CSC uh, Student Design Challenge was Cal S137. Uh, and this is actually one of our older viewer tours. But this is with the property I was mentioning that uh, you know, we captured this 170. And I can look at the details. I think it's uh, square feet sorry this is not showing the proper measurements but um it was 174,000 square feet i believe and chris was able to go through that and capture this whole space in that time frame which was um whoops sorry uh was able to you know quickly map that out and then they were able to use this in terms of the design competition this has been a fantastic and i love being a part of this year over year in terms of um, you know, seeing what the students come up with and the designs that they put out. Uh, and, you know, uh, please check out this site. Uh, it's goiguide.com forward slash CSC. And you'll see all the different past competitions as well as some of the, the, the current one and what the project is that they're working on. You know, when COVID hit, you know, last year in 2020, um, you know, a lot of things are disrupted. Like we're having this virtual trade show right now. Uh, you know, they didn't know, or we didn't know, were they still going to hold the design competition, you know, and, and how is this going to be affected from it? And I'm going to touch back on that here a little bit later in my presentation. But first, what I want to kind of jump back to and walk you through is really what we're going to talk about is VR. Now, when I talk about VR, people think of the goggles where you're walking through a space and, uh, and you can, you're virtually immersed in that space. But 
even though you can do that with our technology and with a lot of the technologies that are out there, it's typically used in gaming, but it's not, they're not wearable everyday devices. You know, everybody is using their phone. They, they've got their, their cell phone. And I think because of the green screen, you're not going to see me, but um, you know, they're using their cell phone on daily activities or they're using desktop. And that's really where people are seeing the advantages of it. And that's what's called virtual reality, but window on world or virtual reality desktop. And that's where people are finding the benefits and most engagement is really driven than that. Um, of course, mobile is, is grown in terms of the amount of people uh, using our tech uh, from that, but that's really dri driven through you know, residential real estate. From a practical and function standpoint, you know, the bigger that you can make it on desktops, you can go in there and measure and use this, this technology in that way. So how is virtual reality enhancing engagement with build spaces? So when you document the space, what are the challenges? How do you achieve the goals of the, of the tools that you that can enhance this process? And really, you know, it takes time to go in and document a space. You know, do you know what you'll need? Do you know what you'll need to determine? And, and I think, you know, a lot of people, professionals have good processes and, and uh, standards in place to going through these, but, you know, did you miss anything? And this is the stuff that I talked about at the beginning where what's in the back of my mind? What did I forget? And, and really the goal of the whole process of documenting is to be thorough, have reliable information, information that you can go back to and you know, verify some of your decisions or to gain understanding and further insights. And, and that's, you know, what do you go when you do through that process? Well, you start off basically with a floor plan. You draw out that floor plan, you get the measurements. Uh, and this takes time and diligence to make sure that you have everything you need. You use photos to photo document that space. But when I look at this, that's a great photo. I can understand what that room looks like, the flooring and some of the, uh, you know, some of the architectural assets and the materials in that space. But what's on either side of me? What's behind me? I, do I have a full picture of what that, that space looks like? And so that's where, you know, you get multiple photos. And then how do these photos tie together? You have a collage of photos and it's kind of looks like a mix smash. How do you keep them organized in such a way that is very useful? Not only for you, if you've done the capture, but for other people working on the project, if they've never been in the space to really understand it. And so what could you do to make this better? Well, you can add in elements like a 360 panorama. And I'm just going to jump to show, here's one an example. So now you have a, a 360 degree panorama. You can actually look up, look down, really understand that space and get a good feeling for it and say, okay, now I can actually walk through and you know walk through and kind of understand how the whole building is put together. And as I'm walking through and understanding how the whole building is put together, I'm building this mental map in my mind of, you know, how is all this, how does this all go together? And so it still takes cognitive effort to do that. And that's where you go back to something like the floor plan. If you could add in a floor plan in here, and I will click and show the opportunity. Now I could have that same space and I actually have this floor plan so that I can completely understand how that space fits and flows, how it works together. It shows where I am situated in the space. And if you look at this tracking cone motion on the floor plan that I'm displaying right now, you'll see it shows me where I'm looking. I also can use this as, as a great way to navigate if I wanna jump right to a specific room that I wanna see. But now I really get a great understanding of how that whole building is situated and the flow of that space. Now, what's the next level? So as I'm going from this micro level to macro, understanding how that building is placed or that space is placed in the world. We give you things uh, you know, on tours that they provide things like, you can see a compass here on the top bottom left-hand corner, or even images like a map that shows where this space is in relation to the world, to roads. You can discern how much parking there is, you know, and now you can really, when you're putting in your work and your effort, you know, understand the neighborhood information about that. And all these things tie in, especially with design and architectural uh, and understanding, you know, what the other buildings and what the neighborhood and what all that uh, works out to be.
uh, and the influences that are there as well. So there are um, other elements too, when you start to look at this, is that, uh, and just sorry to jump, there's tools, there's interactive tools now. So now I, I can walk through the space. I got a floor plan. I understand where the buildings are situated. I understand, you know, ins and outs. But can I actually go in there and do things like measure, document, you know, connect to other documents, connect to other, other spaces, uh, leave notes and, and really understand that. And, and that's what's nice about the ability that this technology is growing fast you know, not only by us, by, but other competitors out there in terms of how do I go into space and use that information now? All right, and so I need to understand, you know, measurements, highlight, highlight ceiling heights, or let's say even, you know, let me document quickly. Sorry, there's a little bit of a delay here on my screen. But if I wanted to go in and understand, um, and let's say ceiling heights. So if you look on the floor plan, or if I look at this, this, this ceiling right now, I can zoom in on a space and I can understand, I'm gonna you know, measure that height from the floor to the ceiling. And it's gonna tell me, you know, nine, four, um, and actually that shouldn't be that, that high. It should actually be a little bit lower than that. Might have gone an angle, but nine three. So on that angle, I can actually measure the, the distance between the studs. So uh, I can go in there and really understand and, and get the measurements that I need. Um, one of the easiest ways and tools in ours is you can, you can bring the floor plans into CAD and measure in CAD, or you can go right on the floor plan and, and measure distances on there as well. You can measure diagonals um, and understand really what it is that you need to grab from that. Even further to that, you know, when you're in that space and you want to document, you want to leave a note, you want to link to a PDF that's calling out something, for example, or even if you want to call out a piece of furniture in terms of marketing, you can add elements like videos. You can click on these tags and it will give a better understanding of you know, what it is you're, you're doing in, in that space. One neat example, I worked with a, a, a building manufacturer um, and showed them the opportunity of what they could do. They wanted to get uh, images of shots of their products. They made, they made things like uh, mirrors and whatnot into uh, a lifestyle shots and showing how it looked in a building. They could even link back to their website in terms of if I click on this, I go right directly to their website and I can see the product that is there uh, called out on that sheet as well. So there's a lot of interesting ways in terms of how to, how to use tags and, and document spaces and really understand that. So I'm just gonna do a quick time check. So I've, I've, I've talked about quite quickly, jump back to the presentation here, the, the different elements that are used in, in uh, documenting these spaces and the tools that are in these uh, virtual reality tools that you can use to help and aid in decision making. And, and really, um, there's a lot of benefits to this, you know, and it's used in pre-construction and planning and helping document scope of work. Um, often operating uh, once construction is, is, uh, is during state and condition of construction as construction progress, or even as construction is completed, post-construction, going there and documenting after it. And I'm gonna walk you through some examples today of how these different, uh, different customers are, of ours are using this in the different worlds that they work in, in terms of restoration contracting, property management, uh, space planning and design and architectural uh, design, even institutional with the city of Waterloo who's uh, using um, virtual reality documenting some of the projects that they're working on. So I'm going to jump, you know, straight into restoration contracting and talk about this. So um, one of our customers, virtual estimating, he's down out of California. What he does is he, he uses techni technology to go in and virtual estimate damages. If there's flood, fire, um, you know, if there's an insurance claim, he's going to go in there and appraise 
the pre-law state and condition of the property. So um, what, you know, what he's doing is to, to go in there and really identify um, and document quite specifically everything that is used. And he uses the 3D tour and the floor plans to be able to uh, deliver on this. Um, uh, and so what's neat is, you know, there's a couple of quotes that I've got of him and you say, and I'll, I'll use these quotes as we go through the space, but I'm actually going to share uh, one of this, this building here. So this, this exact uh, hotel is down in uh, California. So back in 2019 in Bakerfield, California, the Mission Hotel, this is a hotel, uh, it's in a rough part of town to be uh, quite honest and, and the people living there, it's a really uh, very low budget hotel uh, is, is what I'll put it. Uh, and in Bakersfield, uh, California, there was like a dozen uh, fire vehicles, I think 55 firefighters who had to put out this fire. And then the building was really um, uh, jeopardized in terms of the, the, the state and condition of the building. Could people even go into it? And what I'll show you is some of the elements to this, this fire and what was happening. But what had happened, and I'm gonna make this full screen so you can see it a little bit better. But what had happened is when you went into the space and you can see here how the whole beam here is just rolled right over in terms of that space. You wouldn't find me going in here. I think they went in and they temporarily shored it so that they could go in there and document the space. They said to actually do the full documentation of it, um, they would need to be doing shoring of up to $300,000 of work to make sure that people could go uh, in there for the full project. But what he was able to do is with the temporary shoring is go in there, um, capture this 29,000 square foot space and in approximately five hours. And he was able to go in and you can see some of the and hopefully you find this interesting and you can see it quite clearly on your screen, but he's able to go in there and find the point of origin of fire. Um, you know, really show how the damage throughout the building, and you can see the beams here holding up this beams. This is an over a hundred year old building or around a hundred year old building, how that's all just turned on its side. And, and what he was able to do is to get, uh, you know, the appropriate amount of pre-law state and condition and document that for the building owner, because uh, there was a challenge with what the insurance company was saying. And he says, quite often, you don't know what you'll need. Um, you don't know what you'll need until you need it. So, and, and it was on my slide there. And so what he said is, what was interesting is I'm gonna go up to the second floor here, is that when he was in the space, uh, and you can see the damages here. They sit up on the second floor that the damages had uh, really not raised up to the second floor of the building, that it was really just smoke damage. And you can see it's kind of a rough lived in area and a rough, uh, a little, um, probably not the nicest of hotels, especially with screen locked doors like that. But he was able to go in there and identify, um, you know, this king, King stud that was burnt up and, and, and where the insurance company was saying there was no fire damage on the second floor, it was just smoke damage. They were able to go in and document quite in a few places how there was damage on the second floors. And, and this is really uh, an interesting case. And this is how he typically uses this technology um, to show uh, basically uh, in this case, he was able to recover $3.2 million for the total loss. And that reached the, the policy limits for this particular building. $3.2 million, 3 .2 million won't buy you much in, in our market, that's for sure, especially in the Toronto market these days. But his point is, is that you know, whoever has the most data can interpret it, wins, and really is able to identify and he's able to deliver for his clients in terms of uh, quite often when there is a dispute between what, what is going to be paid out on the project. He's able to go in there and document every single stud, uh, you know, and element of that building of the property. Um, going to run back here. Oh my. <laughs> Just uh, if you can give me two seconds. Uh, 
I accidentally, this is a, a comedy of errors today. I accidentally clicked and closed my presentation. Okay. We will be back. So I want to jump into the next, uh, you know, case in terms of what was provided. So I don't know if I've lost what you see on your screen. Can someone give me a thumbs up if it's yeah, how virtual reality? It's there. Yes, Michael, it's there. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> one fun days here. So I'm going to jump ahead through all these slides and get back to where we need to be. Perfect. All right. So construction documentation. This is another project, one of the local uh, uh, Cliff Regal, Regal Real Estate. You know, he bought a new building here in the, the Kitchener or just, I think, across the border into Waterloo. It's around that, that border line. Uh, and, and what he was able to do is when he bought the building, you know, he needed to get permits for this building. He was able to do an eye guide of the property uh, to get building per, uh, uh, floor plans of that property that he could submit for the, the building of it. And then as he worked through the project, he was able to document the same space. Uh, and then identify and, and document it kind of pre it, through the midst of the, the construction process. And then lastly, he was able to document the final product. So you can see from these three angles, and I'm going to jump back and forth again, the pre-construction of the project, the, during the construction, and then post. And you know, there's a lot of benefits to what he's done here. He's using it as a marketing tool. Part of this is uh, he's taken some of these 360s and put them up on Google Street View as a marketing of a project. He's able to show the project from start to finish and show what, how they could transform a space and what they could deliver on in terms of this beautiful coffee shop. That's part of really their, their real estate brokerage. So up the stairs there takes you to their real estate brokerage. But this is also, you know, it's a coffee shop and it, it's a space where you can interact with your clients and really come to relax and have like comfortable conversations uh, in that real estate space. Uh, but then even at the same time, he's documented that mid process of uh, the construction process so that if there ever has to go back at point in time or understand where the wiring is or where some plumbing is, they don't have to go poke a bunch of holes in the walls. They can actually go see exactly where the, that plumbing, that piping and that electrical stuff, uh, uh, where the electrical uh, information is, is at. And so just because uh, of time, I'm going to, I'm running through this a little bit quicker than I normally would. Um, and so I'm going to go to the, on to the next one. So in terms of institutional facility management and construction. So City of Waterloo, this has been wonderful. City of Waterloo has uh, jumped on to uh, using um, our tech in some of their projects. So they have captured, uh, I think, uh, WRC, like the, the project that they're doing there, I think it's a $24 million project. If I don't get my facts straight, please don't hold me to it. Um, and they have the city themselves, we captured initially the button factory. It's a, it's a, um, uh, a, uh, older building, they didn't have floor plans for it. And many of the buildings that they, they own and they manage in the city, they don't have floor plans. In some cases, they have hand-drawn floor plans for those buildings. So they're using our tech to go in there and capture floor plans. Well, they're also doing a number of projects. There's accessibility projects right now that are going on that they have to go through and um, you know make, uh, again, accessible for for uh, you know wheelchair access and just making it easier for access um, for everybody. And so as they're documenting these spaces, they're going back and they're using that to uh, update their floor plans. So in the button factory themselves, they put in a, a, an elevator shaft and then they went back and they're gonna go back and document that and update those floor plans um, with the, and this has allowed them to do um, some of the big projects that they're working on as well. Uh, Rim Park, this is a huge project. They're doing a library addition to this project. I think it's, you know, was initially 
over 10 million estimates. And I'll show you this. This is a massive project that we've been able to capture. This floor plan is over 300,000 square feet in size. So just a massive floor plan. And what you'll notice here is you see these green dots. Those are the highlights of our, 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 point, point, our point cloud or where you would be in the space. There's a lot of them that are turned off. The, the ability of virtual reality is that you can turn on and off um, those hotspots if you don't want people to virtually walk through spaces that are not public access. And what they did here is they turned them all off and are only showing a number of these spaces when they put this project out to tender. And, and they only allowed people, the contractors that were bidding on this project to see the areas that were gonna be affected by um, the construction. This was one of, I think, one of the first projects that they'd done. They always had mandatory walkthroughs for their projects. And this is one of the first projects they did that they didn't have that mandatory uh, walkthrough. A, because of COVID, but two, B, now they had this ability to virtually walk through. So the timing couldn't have been better in terms of being able to put these projects at the tender for having people look at the projects. What that led to is there were companies outside of that they typically get bidding on these projects outside of the Waterloo area from Toronto and even further, I believe in some cases uh, that bid on this project. And so that made their bids more competitive that they, you know, when they put that RFP out. So uh, it's fantastic. And you can see this space. I mean, I'll just minimize the floor plan. I mean, this is massive. You know, you got a couple of soccer fields in here. Uh, you've got, you know, you just go to center ice. There's four hockey rinks in this space. I've never physically walked in here, but I've walked through here virtually a lot of times. It's pretty exciting space uh, in terms of the other hockey rinks as well. So just a great way to capture and document this, this property. So this has been uh, interesting for them. You know, you know, they shared with me a story on the accessibility side where one of the designers was trying to design uh, a doorway for accessibility uh, and had to go back to that same location five separate times um, because there was information that they needed to grab and they didn't have. So they're saying Excuse now, me, Michael. Uh, yeah. Michael, you have uh, just under 15 minutes left, about 15 minutes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, you know, the ability to save time, the, you know, not get in your car, drive down to that location, go do the measurements, whatever you needed, and then come back, they would have been able just to click on a, you know, a virtual tour and then do the measurements right on screen, understand that space, you know, fully, completely. And so uh, this has been a really interesting uh, work case scenario or, or project uh, case study with uh, the city of Waterloo. And, and so we've been excited that they've been using this to document and create as built floor plans. Uh, and they're gonna start using it for asset tagging for you know, the property management side, you know, mechanical rooms and documenting those the mechanical projects. And then also using Google Street View to upload those images. So um, I, I don't know if I did a, a great job of walking through particular exactly what the eye guide is, but I'll, I'll quickly show you. Some other companies that are using it are companies like facility management. So BGIS is a global, uh, a, a global integrated facility management firm based in Canada, one of the largest. Uh, they are they are managing properties in you know globally, U.S. and Canada, and they're using this technology on with some of their clients in terms of you know clients that have thousands of locations across Canada. And so, you know, one of the, the use case scenarios that they played out for me is uh, this has been great to augment and uh, their facility condition assessments. So they do facility conditions and assessments for the buildings that they look after. And, and so this is a great way to shore that up and offer additional value to their clients and what they're providing and has really helped support their other property management services, which I'll touch on quickly. But prior to that, they gave me a use case is that, you know, they're looking after properties that might be in Northern BC. And, you know, there's a, there's a, a manager of that space and I, I won't give any names or talk about kind of exactly what that space is, but, you know, it's like a, a retail space possibly that, you know, they've got a rip in the carpet and they need to go in and they need to be able to identify uh, exactly what that space looks like. And let's just pretend this is carpet down here. So they can go in quickly and, and, and identify, oh, okay, that's the architectural asset. 
So right now what happens is that manager calls their property manager, the property manager calls BGIS or the facility manager that they're dealing with. They have to go and then determine what is the architectural asset, where it is, you know, can you send me some pictures of, you know, what the damages look like? Do we still use that architectural asset in our in our buildings today and in our new projects? And and um, how do we document and 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 what's the total space of that? And then now I need to send some contractors in there to go bid on that project. Well, that process could take easily a month of back and forth and emails. And what this has done is they said they could get back in terms of days. They could quickly go in here and say the damage is right here. You can quickly click on a button. You can hit use this current view. Uh, and now you've got a, a copy of that view. So when I go to click on that view and I put it in my URL, I can send this an email. It's going to take me right there. And so, bam. And now if a contractor needs to look at it and bid out, they can look at it, they can go measure the total space, understand if they need to replace all the all the, uh, the carpet or if they're just tile carpets and they can replace those parts if, if it's an architectural asset that they still use. So uh, exciting use case for that as well. So um, I'm going to you know, talk about just quickly is that it's also being used in terms of space planning. So when I talk about space planning in multiple different ways, because of COVID, being able to go into a church or a school, we've had people capturing these spaces so that they could show saying, hey, this is where you're supposed to line up, feel comfortable about coming into church on Sunday. We've got every second pew is closed. So we're keeping social distancing there. And it's just to be able to build confidence for people that are going to be going to that space and they can understand, okay, this is how it's gonna flow. And, and now I feel comfortable, I can go and see it and they can share this. In this case, they shared it with the parishioners that, hey, feel comfortable about going through this space and, and you don't have to worry about social distancing with COVID and stuff. So um, great use cases for that. One quick area I'll show you is that, you know, even we're using it for designers and space planning. Um, you know, in terms of uh, there are some of our customers are have gone and captured thousands and thousands of square feet. Uh, one of the uh, a, a big property owner in Canada um, had to restructure all their office space to have it appropriately set for uh, just looking at the time, probably set for, you know, distancing in terms of COVID. And so what they did is they captured in a month's time. Uh, over 20 properties with hundreds of thousands of square feet using this technology that they passed on uh, the DXF files that they got from the iGUIDE uh, and of floor plans. And then they used that in uh, you know, CAD to go in and repurpose that space and, and deliver on that project. So another way that they could deliver on it. Um, one thing that we have in terms of we're looking at a new office space. And so we've been able to use it in terms of you know, captured a quick eye guide of that building. Is it going to work for us? Make sure that we can plan it out appropriately. And we have space planning tools that allow people to go in and quickly, you know, upload to floorplanner.com, which is a third party service. You take your floor plans in and you can drop in things like furniture and flooring and understand if that space is going to work for you you know, rotate it and figure it out. And these are just little tools. And I feel like I'm conscious on time here. I'm going to keep running through things. And because I really want to get a touch on a two different points. So one of the customers that we met with uh, that, that introduced us from CSC was Newground. Newground, fantastic case story in terms of they redesign credit unions they in different spaces. And what they do is they deliver the next generation of design. I don't have a specific case I can show you, but what's interesting about speaking to Greg Ward and how they've used this over the last year is that they've designed, I think it was five or six different branches across Canada in Vernon, in Nanaimo, maybe not Vernon, Nanaimo, in uh, Edmonton, in Halifax, in Brantford or Brampton, um, they've been able to design these, these branches. And typically in the past, they would have to send somebody in out there, fly out, send a couple of employees to go measure that space, a couple of days off work or out of work, capturing that data and then come back and then now draw out those floor plans. What has been amazing is that he uses one of our local service providers to go in, capture, do the capture, gives them some guidelines on what he's looking for, 
And then, um, you know, he hires, you know, in one case, he hired them on Friday. They did the capture over the weekend. They had the eye guide and the floor plans by Monday, and they were working on that project and ready to go. Or maybe it was Monday, Tuesday. I can't remember. But within less than a week, they were able to be up and running and working on that project. He said, this has been a very handy tool. Without stepping a foot into that space, he's able to communicate and get on Zoom conferences with his clients and, you know, walk them through what they're planning on doing. If there's, you know, a misunderstanding, you know, clearly understand what they're using for that space. And as a designer, he's looking at how people use their desk space. So you'll look at the 360s of the desk and say, this is how they're using that space and making sure that his new designs incorporate and help those uh, make sure that that space is appropriately designed for, for the, the new concept that they're gonna be delivering on. Uh, in one case, they actually went into the, the vault and they saw that you know, the uh, lock boxes, you know, how much space should they allocate to the lock boxes? And they were able to go in the eye guide and see that half the lock boxes weren't even being used. It's something that not many people use these days. And so, you know, they were able to say, okay, make an informed decision about that in terms of uh, exactly what they have. I might run out of time on for questions, but you I really- have five, You have five minutes left, Michael. Great. I, but I really want to kind of touch on this and I want to bring it back to CSC. So, you know, COVID hits, uh, the CSC uh, design competition uh, for 2020, can we still do it? And, you know, uh, fantastically enough that we were able to, you know, go in there and capture it. We may have captured this property before, but for 2021, we've been able to capture it. But what was fun is, and what I've got up here is one of the winning designs of the, the competition. Uh, team name was called Oko. And it, it was uh, the two uh, teammates were Hope Braga and Leo uh, Lorenz. Hope Braga, and I'm going to brag about Hope, is that she's one of our, uh, our drafts, drafts team, our drafts people. And so she's a drafter on her team. She's going to school. And as she's paying to go through school, she works at Planetar as a drafter. But she came back and she gave me some great information is that, you know, she, she, she was able to get the experience of being in the space without being able to step a foot into the space. You know, this also allows for safety and other concerns as you walk through the space. But you know, what was exciting is that she said she kept on visiting it time and time again, really to understand and how to incorporate their design concepts into the space. And you can see there, they've got a second floor and they have some graffiti. Well, when she went into the actual eye guide uh, and here, you know, they were walking through the space. She saw, and I don't know if this is the particular graffiti, but there was graffiti around the neighborhood. There was graffiti uh, in, in, you know, in order to keep kind of those elements of what she saw and inspire her in terms of what they, inspire her and her teammate on what they were providing, they were able to use this uh, and visit time and time again, really to kind of understand, get ideas, and visualize what a second floor would look like on this space. And, you know, what's fantastic too is you can also go outside the building and really discern and understand how the look is from the outside, inside. Uh, and this is where the beauty of it is as well. Uh, you, they were able to capture photos if you wanted more better photos to zoom in on. But this is really a great tool to deliver on um, and providing value to really understand that they could take these floor plans, bring them into CAD and Revit and really build out their designs. Uh, and, you know, kudos to her and her, you know, their team for, for winning the 2020 design competition. So that's awesome. And they're so excited for her. So I ran through a lot of information and I want to leave it where there's not really any time. And I know that there's uh, you know what, please reach out if you have time for questions. But the whole key point is this is a tool, VR is a tool to help you, uh, you know, if in terms of efficiencies, you know, capture floor plans faster, get reliable information, have decision making information, and to make better informed decisions, being able to be in a space without actually having to physical be there. If you need to contact me or have any questions, reach out to sales at planetar.com. Again, thank you to CSC for having me and Michael uh, and Wally. Thank you for uh, uh, the participation here today. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. That was a uh, fascinating look into uh, you know how VR technology is being used in the build and design. Unfortunately, we don't have enough 
time uh, for questions. Uh, and thank you very much as well, Michael, for a little glitch we had of losing the <laughs> losing everything at the beginning. Um, as well, before we go, Alice, I'd like to thank uh, Sachira, who had um, very graciously sponsored this uh, presentation. Thank you, uh, uh, Wally. So thank now you, what I would like to uh, just let everybody know uh, is if you can please move back to the main stage uh, for a couple of announcements and uh, please take a few minutes uh, between the seminars to visit with, you know, with the exhibitors uh, to find out about new products, maybe meet some new people or hey, catch up with some, uh, some old friends you haven't seen in a while. So uh, the next seminar is gonna start at 3.45 p.m. And I hope to see you at the social later on. That starts at uh, five o'clock. Again, thank you very much to everyone. Thank you for attending.